tropical waters of the Pacific Ocean, along whose shores native villages have existed for thousands of years, but where the white man is a newcomer. For all its beauty, little is known about the land near the water's edge, and less is known about what lies beneath the water's surface. The natives tell strange stories about this sea, stories which to this day have not been disproved. The above water portions of this motion picture were photographed along this coast. The underwater sequences were actually filmed off its shores at the bottom of the ocean. You like it? See, si. my father, he was an artist too. Really? What kind of work does he do now? He don't do nothing. He is dead. Oh, I'm sorry. How can you capture the sweep of the sea with a paint and a brush? I do not blame you. The sea, it makes much unhappiness. It took my father. Was he drowned? No, the thing in there, that got him. This thing? What was it? A big devil. You mean some kind of a sea monster? Much worse. You must have let your imagination run away with you. I speak only the truth. And the cove is a terrible thing. It got my father. He is no longer here. I'm sorry about your father, but we've got to be realistic. I've been swimming in that cove every day of my vacation, and I've yet to see anything any larger than a lobster. You have your belief. I have mine. Let me help. Hey, that's good. You uh, really love that, don't you? You paint too? No, I'm a marine biologist. 
Steve Dunning's my name. What's yours? Julie Blair. You uh, do this kind of painting for a living, Julie? No, I'm a merchandise illustrator. Oh, uh, that's where you paint... Uh... Washing machines, vacuum cleaners, pots and pans. That takes talent. Marine biologist? Mm-hmm. I'm on the staff at Stanford. I was assigned along with Dr. Baldwin to do some research down here along the coast. Nice work if you can get it. Did you know that over 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water? Well, the Pacific alone here has an area of over 73 million square miles. The Atlantic... <laughs> I'm sorry. There I go, making noises like a biologist again. It's all right. I've enjoyed hearing you talk. Uh, how would you like to go out and see our boat? You could meet Dr. Baldwin and see the kind of work we do. No, I... I... Oh, come on, it'll be fun. Do you think both of us could fit into that... Um... What do you call that thing, anyway? Well, that's my submarine. Come on, I'll show it to you. All right. Where's the engine? No engine. I furnished the power. Didn't do anything an airplane can do. Will it fly? Underwater. How about it? You ready? Well, what do I do? Well, you can help me get into the water. You hang on. I'll stay on the surface. Dr. 
five minutes, line stop. Sanchez is at the bottom. Fire! In the car. I'm going over. Follow me. Sanchez. He must be down there. Search the cove thoroughly, not a sign. Where'd he go? How'd he get out of suit? No opening. Except this. No man gets through that. Then what happened to him? Something bothering you, Julie. You can tell me. I'm worried about what happened in the cove this afternoon. Well, I don't blame you. It was pretty tragic. But abalone divers have drowned before. Not like this, Steve. There wasn't the slightest trace of Sanchez. What could have happened to him? I don't know. This morning, I was talking to one of the little Mexican boys. And he told me that his father had been taken by some strange thing down in that same cove. Don't think a sea serpent got him, do you? No. But... Steve, these stories about some kind of a devil in the cove. I've talked to some of the other people here. They believe it. You know, there might just be something to it. Well, even if there is, Julie, I don't think it's your problem. Somebody's got to do something about it. Julie, I don't want you taking any chances. I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. You know, I've grown very fond of you in the short time we've known each other. I like you too, Steve. But I like this little town too. I just couldn't sit by and watch these people terrorized by whatever it is. 
I still don't see why you have to stick your pretty little chin out. That's one of the reasons the world's in such a mess, Steve. Everybody's afraid to start something. Well, I'm not. No, I don't believe you are. Promise me one thing. Help if you can, but don't take any needless chances. The ocean can be dangerous, Julie. Very dangerous. All right. Shall we go? All right. building up to anything. You can't kid me, young lady. Does it uh, possibly concern more uh, sea monsters? I was thinking about it. Julie, you've been reading too many science fiction things lately. Take me out to the cold, will you? I can't today. I'm overhauling my sub. Maybe tomorrow. I don't want to wait that long. You didn't mention overhauling your sub before. Well, I didn't want to bore you. How far are you on it? Well, uh, not too far. Have you actually started working on it yet? In a figurative sense, yes. In a literal sense? You mean you haven't begun yet, is that it? Well, <laughs> no. Come on, Superman. Into your sub. Now you just follow me down below while I scout the place. Happy monstering. You do think there's something down there? Frankly, yes. I think your life will run into a good-sized shark. We have them around here, you know. Steve, you're just trying to scare me so I won't go down there, but it's not going to work. I'm sure of that. Seriously, Julie, we do have a man-eater that wanders in here every now and then. Now, if you meet one, here's what you do. Okay, what do I do if I meet a shark? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Whatever you do, don't head for the surface. You'll snap off your legs like ripe bananas. The safest procedure would be just to stay still. The shark will size you up for a minute, then move on to greener fields. And whatever you do, don't scratch yourself. They can smell blood a mile away. Aye, aye, Captain. Now follow me down below.
Relax, Julie. An octopus is the biggest coward in the sea. I don't care. Get me out of here. You're the one who wanted to go monster, honey. Uh, how big was this octopus, anyway? Uh-huh, that's more like it. It scared me half to death. I thought it was a monster. Here we go again. You certainly are stubborn. Don't you believe in anything? Not in witch hunts. Come on, what do you say we go back and slip into a nice dry martini, huh? Joe, I'd like to talk to you about what happened yesterday. I've heard that there's some kind of devil down in the cove. Do you know anything about it? There is some truth. Do you know what whatever it is looks like? I do not know. But whatever it is, it is not like anything we have ever seen. When did the first stories about this thing start? I remember. My sister, she was married that summer. What year? 1946. Summer, 1946. Soon after the end of the war. Joe, do you know anything else about this? I want every fact I can uncover. I know nothing more. Pablo, he has lived here all his life. Perhaps he can help. The cove is his home. Wait until see him. It's a gift. For a long time, haven't you? See, si, see. Si. There are many stories about your cold. They say that a devil lives here. These days, one believes many things. I'm just trying to help. Please believe me. You do, don't you? Well, of course, Senorita. The ocean. She holds many forms of life. There are many strange stories. Some, there is reason. With my own eyes, I have seen a shark. Well over 60 feet. Uh, the scientificos say that uh, no shark was more than 40 feet, so they say, and so it is to be, but uh, nature, senorita, Nature in her way does many strange things. Sometimes she knows not when to start, and sometimes she does not know when to stop. Then you think there is a chance of what I'm speaking? Have you ever seen anything strange down in the coast? Two, three times. I see something. Once I see tracks. Not from turtle, not from seal, but made from some strange, shapeless thing that come from water of coal, but from the sand. How large was it? Oh, more bigger than wagon, more bigger than a house. Do you have any idea what could have left a train like that? Have you ever seen anything else? Yeah. One night. One night in the surf where it's as deep I see something. At first I think it's it's ship with lantern. Then I see it is nothing like that. Nothing like Oh Madre de Dios. Nothing like anything I ever see. The lantern was on all. Red eye. Only one eye. 
only one. It burned and stared at me. Then it, it slowly went, went down into the sea again. Could you make out the shape? I talk like a pescador who has lived in the sea too long, eh? No, Pablo. I believe you saw what you said. One more question. What kind of a night was it? Ah! La Luna! She was up! It was a full moon! Ah, si, sí, senorita. It is wasted on me. My Gofredo. He's gone. Gofredo? For 12 years we have been together. Now he is no longer with me. Do you have any idea where he could have gone? No, senorita. One night he was here. Next morning, no sign. Has he ever done this before? No, senorita. Perhaps you better report it. I did. They said they would see. I'm sure they will. Maybe yes, maybe no. Why should anyone get excited over Gofredo? He's nothing but an old dog. A dog? I thought that he was your... Never mind. One gets accustomed to a dog. Oh, of course. Perhaps he just wandered off on a little excursion of his own. No. No, I had him tied to doghouse with collar and chain. The collar is still locked. My gofredo is no longer in it. But a track, a strange track from beach to gofredo's collar. What did this track look like? Oh, rough. Very rough, like something very, very heavy dragged over sand. Would you say that it was as large as a wagon? Mm, bigger. Bigger, two, even three wagons. My love is mine. In a minute. Well, clouds are opening up. Look at that moon. Full and rounder than any moon has a right to be. The moon is full. Granted, but why the big reaction? Hey, what is this? Pablo told me that the thing in the cold comes out on moonlight night. Julie, if a man has enough tequila, he's liable to see a lot of things. I believe it. Okay. Uh, tell me, what exactly did this uh, thing look like? Pablo said that he couldn't make out the shape of it, but that it was a huge mass with a red eye that glowed bright red. <laughs> Brother. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Listen, Pablo isn't the only one who's seen the monster. I talked to Joe, too, and he told me some things. Joe? You know, the man whose partner disappeared from his diving suit. Joe told me that the stories about this thing all began back in the summer of 1946. Why do you suppose there were no reports about this thing until 1946? What could have happened then to start the story? 1946? Well, the, uh, 
the bikini underwater experiments were set off then. Maybe that started something. Maybe it did, Steve. Listen, the radiations of that bomb could have reached this far. They could have caused something in that cove to grow into a monster. Julie, look, you're a lovely girl, but lovely girls just don't run around worrying about non-existent sea monsters. Promise me you'll get off this thing once and for all. I'm going to prove to you that I'm right. Steve! Steve, good news. Oh, it's Dr. Baldwin. Just received this wire from the university, confirming our funds for the experiment. Good. Now we can move on down the coast. I'm very glad for you. Oh, it'll just be a few weeks, Julie, and we'll be back. How soon are you leaving? First thing in the morning. We've got a lot of things to do tonight. Steve, I, I guess you better go help Dr. Baldwin with the packing. Look, come back to the hotel with us. No, I'd just be in the way. I think I'll stay here for a little while. Well, all right. We'll be getting our mail at La Paz. You write to me there. If anything important turns up, I'll write to you, Steve. You write to me if only to tell me what you've had for breakfast. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again, Julie. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Doctor. See you later, Steve. Goodbye, Julie. Goodbye, Steve. You know, I could fall in love with you, Julie. You've only known me a few hours. Beautiful, is she not? Uh, except for what it brings. Sabi, I, I do not understand you. Uh, you're not a good deceiver. You know what I think. Superstition. Was it superstition that took Sanja? I don't know. Evil God has plagued our people before. Only in one way can they be appeased. The fairest must be sacrificed to the thing. The fairest? That would be... The young Americana who faints in the cold. Oh. Such things cannot be. Uh, someone must make certain she fulfills her destiny. 
die. I... You, you, you have the blood of your people in your veins. You will do it. No, I... I cannot do such a thing. No one believes in sacrifices anymore. The new generation, the people in cities, they do not believe. But you and I, we have the belief of our fathers. Our fathers are long dead. True. Who is your god? Where's the couple or the new one? But the Padre, he says... You shows... shall do as I say. What is one life when it will save many? It is simple. A shock was seen in the cove early today. Tomorrow, the girl shall be taken to the cove. And the shark will do the rest. And you will carry out my command. Like the water glowed red. We're on the trail now. Only one thing, senorita. Do not take risks.
about Julie is. Fine girl, Julie. Pretty and with a head on her shoulders, too. Among other things. Only if it wasn't for that witch hunt of hers. Well, lots of people suffer that way. What sort of beastie does she fear? Well, she's firmly convinced that some sort of horrible monster is lurking in the cove, devouring every living thing that crosses its path. Any basis for her views? None. Don't be so smug, Steve. Oh, no. You too? Lots of intelligent people suffer from things like oh, that. Oh, come on now, Doctor. You're a man of science. You know as well as I that these things usually turn out to be a, an overgrown sperm whale or something similar. I notice you said usually. You seem to be making exceptions. All right, I'll change my statement. They always turn out to be some simple form of life. I disagree. Lots of times nature plays tricks on us. Uh, like the one you're playing now? Oh, no. Let me tell you a story of my own experience. I was working down in South America a few years ago for an oil company. We kept hearing stories of people disappearing, uh, just like in the comic books. Exactly. Only the stories the natives told dealt with a huge flying reptile. Are you sure it wasn't a flying red horse? No, it seems this monster originated from the depths of the ocean to soar landward in search of warm-blooded victims. The description led me to believe it was a tarandon, a winged reptile with a wingspan of 30 feet. He was extinct after the Stone Age. Well, I found it hard to believe, too. Until one day, a severe storm struck our area. It lasted about a week, and when it was over, I was taking a stroll on the beach. That's when I found it. Found what? A large leathery object the size of a watermelon. I took it to the lab and dissected it. And it turned out to be a reptilian egg. It had the embryonic structure of a tarandum. Well, that sort of finding has happened before. I know. But this egg wasn't fossilized. The egg was still alive. Soon that egg would have hatched to release the monstrous form of life that supposedly has been extinct for hundreds of centuries. A pretty senorita. Si. She lives in San Vicente. I am meeting with her for supper. Oh. Something is wrong? I was going to ask you to row me out to the coast. Oh, mañana perhaps, but not today. Besides, do you think it wise after your meeting with the shark? I'm not afraid. Hey. Why you not take my boat? She little and you're all good as me. Permit me, I put your things in the boat. Or would you please look at my back door to see if it is locked?
Is that yours? Well, Carlos, we're afraid you weren't going to get here. It's from Julie. Never let it be said that Carlos and Mandy failed to complete a mission. Tell me, how's everything on the mainland? Pretty good, senor. That's fine. Thanks for the quick delivery, Carlos. I'm hungry. Let's see. It's a good idea. Get to join us in a bit of chow, Carlos? A thousand thanks, but I must complete my other assignment. Uh, this is for you. Well, thank you, Carlos. Adios. Adios. she has about a sea monster. Well, I certainly give her credit. She's really persistent. Uh, cookies from home? Worse. Conclusive evidence of Julie's sea monster. Oh? It seems she went prowling in the cove with a grappling hook. Snagged onto the mysterious mass and a fierce struggle ensued. Well, after the titanic struggle was over, she managed to salvage her grappling hook. Here, affixed to the end of it, were uh, bits of the mysterious monster. <laughs> you know, it's a pretty good-sized fish stray into those coves. My guess is she snagged on to an irate stingray. Hmm, doesn't look like the flesh of a stingray or any other fish I've ever seen. Disintegrating. Intercellular absorption. Why, it's assimilating the meat. Organic life of some sort, but... But what? It could be an amoeba, but I've only seen it in the most minute size. What could cause it to uh, grow out of proportion this way? It could be one of many things. Some freak accident, dietary supplement. It even could be caused by the radiation from the bikini explosion. It could absorb a man. Or a woman.
Si, senorita. Anchor the boat. I'm going down here. Oh, no, no, senorita. The waters are too dangerous. I cannot do it. Do what? Our legends say if the fair one is sacrificed, the monster will leave in peace. Why, that's ridiculous. Certainly you don't believe a thing like that. Fear it. Fear can do many things. Did you let the air out of the oxygen container? Senorita. Even when I do it, I I know it will not work, but but I must do something. Oh, forgive me, Senorita. I, I would not harm you. It's all right. If you'll help me now.